Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're a married couple in love that loves superhero movies. And we're going ahead and we're re-watching all the DC Extended Universe movies and scoring them and ranking them. Also known as the DCEU, if you know, you're hip, like we are. <laughs> yes, because we are so hip. Check out the shirt, all right? <laughs> I wore this shirt because we're, we're uh, scoring Aquaman. We're going to rank Aquaman. And I feel like Aquaman's a guy that would appreciate this shirt, all right? So that's why I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it for you, Aquaman. I'm sure he's so moved right now. Yes. <laughs> All right, so diving in. Our first category. Ooh, diving in. Get it? Yeah. We did that. We yeah. did that. Uh, our, first, <laughs> our first category are lead male and lead female. So how do we feel about our lead characters? Is this a love it or leave it? Uh, it's a leave it, unfortunately. And it's kind of like with Justice League for me, there's one love it and there's one leave it. Mira is such a leave it for me, and Aquaman just isn't cool enough for me that it's, it's, a, it's a leave it. Mira's just a very boring character. She's got a great body. Yeah, I was about to say, I was about to say, yeah. Other than sex appeal, there's not really much she brings to the table, unfortunately. It almost seemed like someone's idea of playing a Disney princess. <laughs> you know, like she could be fierce and she could be a woman and she can fight too, but she's really at the end of the day, this girl and damsel in distress and a bad marriage and like, ugh. Aquaman, he's a fun guy to go grab a beer with, but there, there's just nothing kind of beyond that. It's all kind of surface level. Uh, yeah, see what I did there, yeah. Yeah, again. It's just too many, too many puns. This is going to be the worst ever. Oh, God. I can't believe we got him started on this. Um, so for me, too, this was also a leave it. Uh, and similar feelings for you. Or similar feelings as you, I should <laughs> yeah, say. Yeah, but she's going to leave me. She's going to leave me. she got similar uh, feelings. Sorry. Aquaman, he's like this big, burly man's man. Drink beer and punch things, and it's fine. It's not like my ideal guy and it's mm -hmm. not like the fantasy man for me clearly i appreciate the moments of humor that he had and i appreciate the reimagining of aquaman and something that is a little bit more badass to me that's why this movie i think did so well and so many people do enjoy it is because a lot of times it's very hard when you have a character in a comic book that people you know growing up reading and everything more often than not when you bring it to life, people are going to be disappointed. They're going to nitpick it. And it's just not going to, you know, the best you usually can hope for is to nail the character and be just as good as you imagine it to be. Aquaman, I feel like, is the rare occasion which it takes it a step up and it's cooler than he actually is in the comic books. Moving on to the villain. Now, the villain in this one was Orm or Ocean Master. Uh, so love it or leave it. For me, this was a leave it. And I'm really sorry to say that because I was so excited that they had Patrick Wilson in this role. He's going to really bring something to the table and it's going to, it's going to really... In, in a way validate this film and, and kind of root it in something. So much of what he what he was a part of was CGI dependent mm -hmm. and the CGI was not smooth. It was very obviously in your face CGI. So I was very aware of the fact and it took away from the believability. And then the character is like just this spoiled pampered prince. <laughs> I mean, there's just, there's nothing to like. There's nothing to yeah. care about. There's, you just want somebody to pound you and, and get it over with. Like, that's it. That pretty much sums it up. Side characters. characters! So for me, this was a love it. I, first of all, loved Nicole Kidman's portrayal of Atlanta. Yeah, she's um, great. Her fight scene in the very beginning of the movie. I mean, mm -hmm. for me, when she was on the screen and when we got that sort of prequel to the Aquaman story, I was hooked in. I was also interested in Volko, who was William Defoe's character. Um, See, I was interested in Volko, but I didn't get enough of Volko. Like, I mean, so... That's True. why you have Willem Dafoe, you have such a great actor in there, and I just felt like there, he wasn't given enough to work with, and uh, I think if they had cut out the whole Black Manta storyline in this one, it would have made the movie better. Uh, Black Manta was terrible in this, it just felt very cartoonish. The the bad guys, Ocean Master and all, on our, on our villain side, have offered him money to go and kill Aquaman. Black Manta is a self-proclaimed pirate. What do pirates love? Money. So when he's offered money to go do the thing he loves and get vengeance, he says, no, that's okay. I don't need the money. Killing him's enough. You're the worst pirate in history, dude. <laughs> so next up is the script. This for me, this was a leave it, unfortunately. I think you see where this is going. One of the big things here was the stereotypes in a very insulting way as a female audience member. The big, burly, beefy man hero against the pampered princely evil dude and like the woman caught in between oh no damsel in distress <laughs> and the fact that it was just so blah like 
That, that, that is that is our view of Aquaman. It was so blah. I mean, Mira had one good fight scene, and I think if I'd been even remotely, like, a, a pinky's worth invested in Mira the character, that fight scene might have carried it over the edge. The dialogue was, there were some pretty cringeworthy uh, dialogue moments, jokes, that just kind of fell a little bit flat, and I didn't really, didn't really love. One of the most cringeworthy ones okay. was with Black Manta, in the beginning, when he uh, attacks a submarine, and he tells the captain, he goes, I won't tell you how to captain. Don't tell me how to pirate. That is awful. But Black Manta, I am going to tell you how to pirate. When somebody offers you money, you take it. So on to our final category, which is film impact. Uh, what kind of impact did this film have on you? And uh, for me, this was the one area where I loved it. Uh, there was enough humor in this movie um, that, you know, made it, enter made it entertaining, helped pass the time as I was bored through some of the other parts. Uh, but also the visual elements of, for this. I thought it was really cool in Atlantis. For me, it was a leave it. This was a movie that was made for a male audience. Yeah, Period, for sure. Period, full stop. For sure. Uh, there was no outreach there to anyone but a beer-drinking manly man. So if you don't yeah. fall into that category of like drinking beer and punching things, and <laughs> then this movie just wasn't made for you. The CGI in it, which I know you said it was very visually stunning, I so wanted to like that. But it felt like they made this movie like 10 years too soon. Because <laughs> the CGI was just so, so blatant, so in your face that it was not smooth or effortless or flawless in a way that allowed me to suspend my disbelief. Let's move on to our final scores. Uh, for me, Aquaman overall was a leave it. Unfortunately, I know a lot of people love this this movie, and um, you know if you did, that's great. And I can you know I can see why you, it's got a fun male lead in it. But for me, it just didn't it just didn't resonate, and that's why overall my score was a thirty eight. And you're gonna be shocked because of how much I knocked this film, but mine was a forty six. But but it lost some points. It lost some points for boredom because there were some elements in there where we just kind of like. Your mind just wandered and we weren't invested in it. So I lost minus five points for that, which means my total score down to a 33. And my final score down to a 41. I have to say that for me, apart from Nicole Kimmon and the prologue of the film, it was really Jason Momoa that saved this movie. Yeah. Uh, had they gotten perhaps any other actor <laughs> in that role, I don't think this movie would have done even as well as it did. There... There was something about his portrayal and his rooting of this character that, while it may not have been... And his on-screen charisma. I mean, just... And his charisma, which he has in spades. Yeah. But he has it not in your James Bond way. He has it in your drink beer and punch things mm -hmm. way. I mean, there is... He's a man's man. And uh, while he may not be my ideal fabulous guy... He is still charismatic, and he is still bringing something to the table that rooted this character in an honest portrayal and the kind of portrayal where we go, yeah, I mean, I've, I've kind of seen that guy in real life, you know? And I think that's one of the reasons that I think maybe with a be better script uh, and some better maybe supporting characters, and a better use of supporting characters, because they had some good supporting characters in there, they just didn't use them properly. I think I'm looking forward to Aquaman 2, because of, you know, Jason's portrayal of Aquaman. And I think that, you know, I believe in him as the character. And I just think that, you know, they just need to get the script better. And I'm looking forward to Aquaman too. Our final score for Aquaman was a 37. But that is definitely not definitive. 